welcome back. My name is Chinelo and I'm an international student studying MSc Occupational Therapy here in the UK. If you're new here, thank you for tuning in. And if you're a returning subscriber, hi guys, thank you for always coming back, guys. Thank you. You guys are the real G's. Alright, guys, this is my first video of the year. Official first sit down video of the year. Even though January is the most overall. Yeah, we know. So happy new year, guys. I hope 2023 is looking bright for you guys. Guys, don't mind my nails. This one I took it out because it's my right hand. I was struggling, but this I still have. So I'll try and be raising just my right hand, my left hand. So yeah, guys, this video it's a video request from somebody people on Instagram. Just three persons though asking me about my interview tip. Oh Chinelo, it's January. I have my OT interview soon. I'm just wondering how did you do yours? Like how did yours go? So I'm like, that's true. But this was not even the period I, I did my I did my own around March whenever you watch this whether in january or in march it might still be helpful so it's about occupational therapy interview ot school interview tips after you've submitted everything you submitted they would invite you for an interview that's like the next stage before you can they will not give you offer letter the guide here is the structure that was used for me it might not be the same for every other school but i did three interviews and i'm just going to talk about all the structures that were used for my interviews all right guys let's get right into it okay First interview i had guys i really prepared i was so nervous i was reading everything about interviews but to my greatest surprise it was like a group interview we didn't interview for everybody the same day there were about 30 of us and so they had like two interviewers and one supervisor just someone to have to be sure that everything goes free and fair so we just broke us into groups of six and the first question we were asked was about a scenario we we're given a scenario and we were asked how we would you know come together and work as a team to tackle that scenario the scenario was like what are the important things you're going to look out for when caring for somebody in the hospital so we had like a drop down and that drop down we were told to choose it in the order of importance so one of them was compassion listening skills you know introducing yourself to them making sure that they feel they feel um that they feel heard and their feelings are valued so we're asked to choose all of that in drop down so because we're in a group of six one person had to be active and say hi so i think if you feel like um compassion should come first raise up your hand if you feel like the other one should come first raise up your hand and then someone was marking down and taking down all our options after a particular question so we're asked how do you participate what do you think you did well what do you think you did not do well in that situation they were checking how we were able to reflect in action people that had leadership skills people that were good followers working together as a team how much impact did you think you made while working with the team how well did you listen to other people's opinion how well did you make other people feel because while we were all doing all of that and raising up our hands people would say oh i think this is it in that situation they were checking are we interacting with each other are we talking over each other who coordinated it so they ask you what do you hide what do you think you did well what do you think you would do better in the next time like if you're supposed to have this type of interview again what are you going to do better so people were saying oh i think i was not active enough i think i would have taken the leadership room i don't think we were coordinated enough i think we should have you know been more coordinated it was just you know things like that that they were asked. that was how the first interview went in that particular first interview nobody asked me why did you want to do ot why are you choosing this school why this and why that no it was very very it was very chilled it was just like as i said did access question choose from the importance of the question because honestly as we were in that group some people did not really talk even though you know, we're asked to choose those in the drop downs and when we're choosing it give a reason why you're choosing the particular thing you're choosing why do you think comp being compassionate should come first as against introducing yourself very well to your clients and telling them why you're here why you're here and what you're going to do for them the other one is why do you think making them feel seen and heard, heard is important why do you think we should follow a client-centered approach so all of that it seemed like it was easy but guys i'm telling you this went on for over for like the interview lasted for like Mm, 45 minutes but this went on for 30 minutes in that section because we had 20 minutes to pick and and you know talk about so everybody give their point about it and then we had another 20 minutes to now reflect back on our action yeah that was how that particular one went i feel like why this interview was a little bit chilled is because we had already done a written tax we we're giving a written tax to do to submit two days before the interview so the task we were given the video to watch giving a scenario and said what would an occupational therapist do for this client so the client had 
can't remember i think it was ms so we asked what do you think and what you should do how would they advocate for this client how would they be involved in this client's care it was handwritten guys we did not type it it was handwritten and then we submitted it so i feel like this is why this one was a little bit chilled but my second interview was more like a proper one so the third one and the second one i was almost asked the same thing so i'm going to combine the questions and put them in this one same thing we had two interviewers and one observer and it was still zoom but it wasn't like face to face only you were it was 10 of us so they would call you up but to be honest the school i'm attending now one girl from there who met me in the interview the interview of the other school that we did not go to so yeah and the professor came in introduced herself the other person came in, introduced herself told us how it's going to be told us what the structure would be like you know they just tried to make us feel good all right the first question i was asked in this interview was the normal interview question the first question was what influenced your decision to study occupational therapy so the thing is you know why this is very tricky is when they pick you up it's not what they ask the other person that they will ask you it's not like they'll say oh chinelu what influenced your choice your decision to study occupational therapy and they'll ask it in line no because everyone can prepare but no they just and we had on our cameras they just said my question was what influenced your decision to study occupational therapy here i think what they were looking for here is for you to tailor it down to yourself and your decision on why you made this decision what influenced your decision example people are telling stories of how their dad had this issue and occupational therapies came in helped solve it people are talking about how if they have a heart of service so guys whatever you're saying just try and make sure that you're tolerant to yourself tolerate it like your past experience you just want to understand why did you choose occupational therapy how did you arrive here okay and the second question i was asked is why our university why did you choose the university among every other university in the uk by this particular university it bust my head but i had already prepared for this question and because the university was very close to scotland so i talked about how my how i had family in scotland they just want to understand why this particular university it can be that you like the structure you've checked you like their teaching system or they have a high number of international students they're very inclusive or from your research just keep saying from your research because guys you haven't been there you like the city you like the food guys you're just going to have to act like you know this thing <laughs> So that was my second question. The third question I was asked was, can you tell us about the challenging situation you've been in and how you resolved it? I mean, I was confused because I asked, is it work setting my life or school setting? So they said, no, general, let's talk about your previous rule. How did you, you must have encountered challenges. So how did you solve that? Here, guys, at this particular point, they're just speaking out my body language. What is this girl saying? She's on my oops. <laughs> like, they're just speaking my body language. So first of all, just create a scenario and say, oh, this is what happened. This is how you came to the conclusion and this is how you solved it. Shekina, it's quite an easy question. So, guys, you're gonna crack. You're gonna crack your brain. <laughs> but what makes this thing good is that when you prepare, I tell you, if you've checked the YouTube interview tips, it doesn't have to be about occupational therapy, maybe healthcare, nursing, social work, guys. There's no how you prepare for all of this that you will not be ready because the questions are almost the same thing. They are very much alike. So my first question was, and funny enough, you won't even know it's an interview. It was more like a chit chat. So she said, you know, this is going to be a very challenging two years. It's going to be very taxing that a lot of people have to do part time while working as well. So how am I going to manage school still having occupational balance? In context, occupational balance is how are you going to manage your personal life? manage your well-being manage school manage your work life how are you going to balance all of this together because well, none should be lacking okay we know that you're a student but we also want you to have a professional balance we also need you to ot yourself while you're trying to ot every other person so just talk about how oh, you understand that school is priority but you you have to plan you have to prioritize that by planning and prioritizing you you know do tax when they're supposed to be done have it like a plan thing is going to be crashing with each other with the other am i communicating i don't know but i'm sure you get it <laughs> the fifth question i was asked was even overlapping with the fourth one because i said what is going to be your priority as a graduate student and i'm like it's obvious school is going to be my priority that's why i'm coming school is not going to lag behind because of work because you can't tell them that you're not going to work sometimes the people say they're not working but they just know that a lot of people have part times because you're not just going to be there you have breaks so some what what i said was that even if i have a part time that i have family in the uk so that's going to give me already a soft landing so i'm going to prioritize uni work 
attending my classes, do my assignment, do my pre-reading, do my post-reading, be involved in what is happening in school. I'm not going to be a passive student. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> just talk, my dear. Just talk. So the sister was like, he said, the sister, you said, you understand that facial therapy is the work with other healthcare professions and you don't work alone. Sometimes you have to do long work, but you rarely work alone. You have to work with PTs, which are language therapies. So do you think you're a team player? You mentioned that, oh, you know, you don't work alone. So I was like, oh, that in my previous room, maybe in school, we've had to be in a team, delegate work. Let one person not carry the bulk of the job. When you delegate, they will do their own. You do your own. Make sure you carry everybody along. I know why this question is very important because even in school, I can't remember any course that we do that we don't do group work. It's like when you come to class, after the main lectures of the lecturer talking and teaching, there's something called a seminar. And in that seminar, it's mostly you and your group members doing group work. They put you guys in groups. You do the work. One person comes and talks about it or everybody talks about it. You do presentation. It's always is you're never doing your own thing you only do your own thing when you're not ready to submit assignment that's the only time you're doing your own thing seventh question was why did you choose occupational therapy among every other healthcare profession there are other courses there's nursing there's social work there's this one there's physician associates why did you not choose it why did you choose occupational therapy i just want to know that you understand what occupational therapies do and how unique we are and how you know they stand out guys just do your homework if you do your homework you know the answer so that was my seventh question. My eighth question was, how well do you work in a team? This answer, I'm just going to say, oh, I understand that in occupational therapy, in healthcare, even in school, you're not going to work alone. So you, you do well alone, but you understand the, what the, the unity that being a team brings. People bringing their different skill sets and making things work so that you're a team player, you know what you bring in a team. Make sure everyone in the team is carried along. I think that's the last question. I think, so I think I mentioned it. I know I had like 10 it was 10 but the other two i've lost it and this 10 they were not like 10 straight questions one thing would lead to another like these team ones i had like three questions concerning being a team player and all of that so but they were all intertwined another question i forgot how can i forget this question they asked me what are the six values of the nhs while i was reading i also studied like some questions about nonsense what are the six C's in nursing profession or something like that. But me, I was asked, what are the six values of the NHS? And guys, because I already, I crammed this thing, I put it in my brain. I know that one of them is working together for patients and this respect and dignity. Well, you can find the other ones, the other answers. If not, this video is going to be long. So when you prepare, you're going to find the code of conduct of the NHS, the values of the NHS. You don't know which one you'll be asked, so just be prepared. Even if you prepare and they don't ask you any questions like from what you've prepared it helps you to understand the way you're going to answer these questions could help you to know how to navigate through these questions when you prepare preparation they say brings excellence anyways if you're watching this that means you're preparing for an interview whether it's occupational therapy or whether it's ot school interview or any other school interview i wish you good luck and guys if i can do this you can i was very nervous you'll be nervous before you start but once you get into the questions answer the first one the second one the nerves they start coming down if you're here and you've done like a school interview as well how did your school was in there freaking did you get into all your schools or some said yes and some said no i got into my three schools i had to even say no. okay just comment down below and let's engage and if you have more questions about interview that you feel like i haven't given here just ask me guys and i always come true okay so this is where the, this video ends guys if you're watching this video and you've not subscribed to my channel I don't know what you're waiting for, but I like that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This is how you help me in 2023. I wish you good luck and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.